Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh, Chief of Bureau with Aviation and Defense Universe, and reporting live from EAMRO 2023, the second edition of EAMRO here at uh, New Delhi. And I am sitting with Shripulak Sen. Shripulak Sen, we all know him from ages with Aviation and Defense Universe. He is our dear friend, our guide, our philosopher, and he is the founder and secretary general of MRO Association of India. Welcome to the chat room, sir. Well, this is not the first time we are talking to you, but of course, it's a different setup, different environment that we are speaking to you today. Yes. And uh, sir just finished his presentation on MRO 2030 Indian Roadmap. Of course, MRO 2030, which means the future of MRO, the future of MRO industry that he talked about on his presentation. So we will further talk to him about this. And sir, my first question to you, during the whole day uh, here at this conference, um, we heard about MRO industry uh, sticking more to the civil aviation rather than military aviation. Right. So we want to know your thoughts on this. You are talking about the convergence of civil and military MRO. So let me give you a background to it. The government of India two years ago have put up a mandate to the both the Ministry of Civil Aviation and uh, Ministry of Defence to synergize between the two MRO segments and not that in the civil MROs were not doing any work with military MRO, they were doing earlier, but the new impetus is to bring in the, uh, the, the regulatory authorities, DGCA, SEMILAG, DGQA, to come together and on a common platform and do the certification. The uh, non-critical air platform, including the drones, to be uh, done, uh, MRO to be done by civil MRO. And uh, the other interesting thing that is being told is planting plant MRO. That means the civil MRO people will come into the BRDs and do the modification, the MRO of military aircraft and then <coughs> cross utilization of the workforce between them. That is the uh, idea of the government of India. It, there has been two committees which have been formed on an additional uh, joint sec uh, additional secretary level from both sides. Uh, they have been working on it for three, four years. Nothing has still percolated to the work table level, but I am sure it will be done very soon. Now you know the uh, C295 is being produced in India. That is where perhaps the uh, MRO, civil MRO people will get an opportunity to, to work along with uh, the military personnel from Benjamin's wing. Uh, ultimately what you need is actually the synergy between the two workforces because they have equal qualification, if not a little here and there. Another thing I would like to stress upon here with your permission, I think a national test team has to be built in the country consisting of pilots, test pilots, engineers, test engineers and other such uh, personnel because once we start manufacturing the C-295s uh, in India, uh, 40 of them are to be manufactured in India, do we want to depend on the manufacturer's OEM's uh, test team or do we want to develop our test team to do this? So this is a question I pose to the higher eloquence of the government to ponder and build the civil and military testing. We have ASTE in Bangalore, which is doing the testing of military aircraft, especially the uh, fighters and other things. This should be, this is actually C-295 is a uh, equivalent of a 
it is a military transport aircraft, it can be turned into a civil transport aircraft as well. So it, there is a need for a national test team of pilots, engineers and such. Right. Sir, uh, you have been with the MRO Association of India, you have been in the heart of affairs, the, heart, the all the policies, the changes in the policies, you have seen it for a very long time. Now, uh, with this convergence, how is the MRO Association of India, what MRO Association of India can uh, do in this in this kind of, what, what can be the efforts that MRO Association of India can have, do? Uh, let me tell you something which may not be uh, in public realm. When the Honorable Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya took over, he formed an advisory group where he called upon the Indian MRO industry leaders, leaders to form this advisory group where who worked on modification of the NCAP 2016 and uh, I am told that certain things have come into being for that and coming on the uh, convergence of uh, civil and military uh, MRO, Indian civil MROs have been working with the defense forces for a long time before this dictum was uh, put up by the government. They, uh, like Airworks India is the authorized uh, center for Boeing, uh, Boeing uh, 737s of the VIP squadron. Uh, they have been there for long and uh, like Max Aerospace does some work for the military side, their uh, Amal Aviation used to do work for military side too. So there are uh, synergies already, but this has to be cemented further. Right. So my next question is from the presentation that yes. you gave about the skilling, the skill development in India for MRO industry. You stressed a lot on that. And another point I saw on your presentation and slide was the virtual training. So, don't you think virtual training it's it's better to have a proper uh, proper courses and proper classes rather than have virtual training for mro industry I for the skilling with you. i agree with you because uh, it's a hands on experience yes. more on it as i told at my presentation that even with virtual training the airline will not allow any student to touch and feel yes an equipment or an aircraft i remember that yes because these are all, uh, some of them are leased aircraft. Lessee would not allow any tampering. The term is a tampering by any third party who is not certified to touch the aircraft. Right. Coming to your computer-based training, mm -hmm. yes, it is very, very nice. In fact, I know of institution, if I can uh, pronounce it here, it is Thakur Institute in, of Aviation in Bombay mm -hmm. who have got this virtual training program okay. with them. But at the site they have a 747 mock-up, uh, rather a cut-off on the front fuselage, the cockpit. They have other aircraft also to touch and feel. Mm -hmm. But to touch and feel a sedentary aircraft and to touch and feel a uh, uh, live aircraft is completely different ball game. So it is in the interest of uh, the students who will take up uh, the mantle later on. Yeah. They need to be trained on both the CBT, computer based training, on-the-job training because without on-the-job training he cannot he or she cannot be a competent engineer or a technician right sir agree my final question yes we are at e amro conference an event that has happened conference which has happened and we 
are looking forward to another event of MRO Association, the yearly event of MRO Association, 2023. Can you tell us more what new is going to happen? What will be the agendas this year? Uh, it is very uh, premature to tell you about the agenda, but I can assure the audience that we have moved away from Aero City, the hotel that have been hosting us for from 2016. Uh, we felt today, after the 2022 show, it is very small venue. The traction has built up so much. We celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. Yes. And we had around 500 to 600 footfalls on each day of the bo of both days. So we chose to take that uh, event, MRO, Aero MRO, to a new venue, the Lalit in uh, Barakamba Road, uh, which will be a bigger venue. And it will be our 10th exhibition in conference. So we have, we hope that we will have better participation. Uh, we are going to bring the OEM to one of the topics would be OEM support to MRO, which was there last event also. But all the more so now because the government wants OEMs to put up MROs with Indian MROs or uh, otherwise. And uh, last time you were there at the event, you saw yes. the Honorable Minister giving us a video presentation yes, sir. and message on that right. it is our aim and wishful thinking that we would try and get the honorable minister to come and talk in our event give the message to both indian mros mm -hmm. and international mros and oems yeah. as to what the government wants in the future Right. I would like to tell my audience here that yes, last year Aviation and Defense Universe was very much present at Aero MRO 2022. It was a great successful event with a lot of international and national participants and this year as well we are privileged to be the media partners again with Aero MRO 2023 and we are really looking forward sir to meet more new international partners and national MROs to be and OEMs to be in, in that uh, in that event and thank you so much for your time sir and uh, all your uh, can i add another definitely thing? definitely sir the thing that i want to add is after the announcement on linkedin yes we have started getting inquiries for participation from various corners of the world uh, when the event is in november you can understand how important that event has become or popular the event has become that in april people want to book for november right now it is a very successful event sir we have seen it always and it's one of the oldest one for the mro industry here in india so definitely people look for networking people look for uh, meeting new people and getting to know more what is happening in the mro industry thank you so much for your time sir thank and uh, looking much. forward to meet you again and always you are with aviation defense universe you're always there for us thank, thank you so you. much sir thank